Good morning, Brian with Grand Riffing. Doing a quick drone shot of the job we're getting set up here. It is July 19th, I believe. Wednesday, July 19th. ABC is out getting ready to boom up a Malarkey Vista job for us. So we'll go ahead and pan around, do a little bit of that. I've got to get busy once I do a little getting the guys going here. We've been here over the past, I don't know, half hour hour setting up. I've got a busy day, but I want to try to keep this kind of content coming for you because it is kind of cool and just fun flying. So anyway, ABC just got uh, up here, got the driveway all checked out, documented any already cracks there and uh, getting ready to boom this up. So setting out everything, protecting the perimeter as far as like cautioning it off and they will be helping us out tremendously so we don't have to carry everything up on this or set the laddervator up. So we've got this all getting ready to go, material getting ready to come off. Guys are getting their harnesses up into the top ridge there because it is a steeper two-story roof. As I said, it's a Malarkey Vista that's getting ready to go back on this once we get it all tore off. Got some more guys in transit getting ready to get here. Hopefully get all this knocked out today. The gutters here were just recently replaced. I'm going to stay over here in the shade so I can see. Try to hopefully cut down on this noise. Um, anyway, he had the gutters and soffit and fascia stuff done. So we're going to be very careful trying to protect and cover, get that stuff set up. Not to damage it. If it is, if it does get damaged, we'll be fixing it, taking care of it at my cost. So ideally, if you're going to be redoing your roof and gutter and things, it's a good idea to actually do your roof first and then do your gutters. As you can see on this side, what we've got started, let me try to zoom in down on this here. We've got some shingles we've got uh, ripped off of the ridge area or some scraps we may have, and you just simply put it across the bottom row. Typically up under a shingle that's there, if it's sealed down too good, you can put it right at the bottom lip. So as the trash comes down, it jumps the gutter. It doesn't really touch the gutter. They do make things on the market where you can keep them, like say the Equipter. The Equipter has these little, I believe they've got little nylon or aluminum pieces that kind of fan out to cover your gutters. The Equipter can actually come up and lift up the, the tossing the stuff right into it but with the equipter it's a whole nother piece of uh, equipment which actually is a little time consuming to get brought in towed around when you're dealing with dump trailers and everything else so i've got the tarps down getting ready to get the sheets off the truck from abc get plants and things like that covered it is going to be a warm day today so as soon as we get all this tore down and cleaned up we'll be cleaning the ground quickly this is too steep to carry the trash. So in that case, you just got to let it uh, slide off. You got to do your best to cover and set everything up. And here we go, getting ready to offload the material. So what we're going to do is try to get some of the shingles off the top ridge and then have it boomed up across these big top ridge sections, kind of evenly displacing the weight. So you don't want to stack it all in one area, but you also don't want to put too much to where you just have to move it before you roof up under it. So. Evenly stack it, space it, and as you roof up, you're consuming the material. Sometimes if we can get here early enough, we'll tear it off, put some passes of paper down, and then be able to put the roof offload right on that area so it's ready to go. You don't have to move it twice. But uh, the delivery guys got here faster than we could get that accomplished. Trailer is backed in over that far bay over there so we can at least catch that L section once we set that gutter up we'll be able to let that stuff slide down and anything in the pocket just off to the right out of view kind of near that satellite dish that's walkable in there we'll be able to pitch it over and slide down that valley to at least save a little bit of cleanup that's a bad angle it looks like they're going to hit that uh, uh, basketball goal but I know they're not oh he's moving my drone case whoopsie it's a nice, beautiful morning weather-wise this morning. It was a little chilly, mid-60s or so, really dewy out, but not too hot. Today's high is supposed to be a little warm, not not crazy hot. I know some of you guys watch are in a really hot region, but it's supposed to be in the uh, upper 80s today, but humid. And I'm pretty sure that Canadian smoke is going to be rolling back through. You don't care if I go up over the boom, do you? You don't care if I go past over the boom, do you? Uh, any of the top ridges, really. Um, probably the one straight back where they've already got some of the uh, shingles tore off. Straight east of where you're at. Okay. I can go down. Um, and I'll get it down low. Yeah, if you want to get down to that ridge or if, yeah, anywhere where they can, the tip of the point right there where they can just walk it. Yeah. 
Does that account for how big the pallets are at the time or how Correct. much weight? So you got a sensor on there. Yep, so it'll keep it, the safety in case anything. So you see the flashing right here? Uh -huh. 90 is our main boom right here, meaning the main boom is maxed out. I can't really move it. I can retract it. The secondary right there, which is that, that means I can go up and down with that one still. But it's got scales or something on it, so it knows the, the tension, the weight on it? Correct, yeah. That's okay. all built in the computer. It's okay, so if you got less squareage up there, it'll let you move further? Exactly. Okay, so nice. Normally what they'll do, they'll, they'll throw off right here. They'll throw off maybe three or four square, and then from there I can reach all the way up to the top, no issues. Okay, perfect. Yeah, with from right there, honestly, they'll be able to walk those two ridges and just kind of helping us out with a lot of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, you're our first delivery, first customer. So, so this is the That's actual good. first material load on this brand new truck. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So what kind of truck is this? As uh, far as like the, the brand or the model make? It's a Mac. Uh, a Mac it's truck. Mac granite. They call it just Mac granite. The frame is a 425 high up roll. Which is on the frame right there. Oh, right there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so this would be a three-story boom. Uh, we, we can get up to five or six stories. They use those in New York. Wow. Uh, they even had one that was like a 100-footer. Most jobs, if it's walkable, we'll carry it right to the trailer, but this is not walkable. The Skyjack? You can see right here, pretty good. It's awesome. you can watch it as go. Oh, this is definitely a huge tool in making it easier, especially when I'm figuring like steep, cut up, high church buildings, things like that. <laughs> hey, Miguel. So, do you do the takeoffs through like. Uh, I do all that myself. No, I stuff? use a software called uh, Riff Sketch. Okay. Or, uh, no, I'm sorry, not Riff Sketch. Riff, uh, Riff Snap. Riff Snap? Hell, I don't even know what it's called now. I don't know. I've been using it for a few years. Okay. It's got an API that plugs in with Google Maps, and then if you can't go to get image from there, most like populated areas that have a uh, uh, near map images from near map higher res that you can grab. Okay. Um, and if not, you can always take a drone shot looking straight down as long as you know your facets and a scaled measurement. So one section you measure. In my case, I just measure my truck okay. and uh, just sketch them out. I can have them done typically in about 10, 15 minutes. No waiting for Eagle View or Hover or any of that. It's one charge per month, but an unlimited amount. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so it's, it's no, huge. It's not that's good. So as far as the house here, we're going to try to get all this wrapped up today. Let's say I got another truck of guys coming. The power fans are removed. The homeowner's wanting to have everything opened up the ridge. The power fans are messed up anyways. The two skylights back here have got issues going on, so he's wanting to remodel that. We're going to remove those deck over it. He's going to have somebody take care of the inside stuff as far as re-insulating and drywalling. The chimney is going to have all new flashing and counter flashing after the roof has all been tore down, dried in, ice and water around all that section right there. It'll be shingled step flash in the bottom area of a valley and a chimney like this. It's important to not use the first few pieces of step flashing right there. The reason being is any water coming down the valley is going to miss any potential flash that you've got in there, or any flashing you got in there. So what we typically do is we would shingle flash up the lower sidewall. When you're getting ready to put your top, your uh, your cricket shingles in there, you're going to use a large piece of coil flash at the bottom two foot or so. It's going to go down. It's all going to be wrapped with ice and water. Then your valley roll will dump out on top of your piece of flashing there. That way, if there ever is a leak, it's coming down your ice and water, your last defense there, it's going to come out onto the top side of the first piece of flashing. Once you run up a couple of feet, then you'll transition into step flashing going up the rest of that back side of that uh, chimney there. Any chimneys wider than about two to three three feet or so, we'll do crickets. Most of them already have crickets or saddles, whatever you want to refer to them as.
So there's the other power fans not doing anything good. It's going to come out. There's the little pocket area. It's got about a 412 pitch in it, so it's good, but it's going to be reinforced with ice and water in that section. Um, possibly, I'm going to go up here in a few and see. We might just go grab some uh, base sheet, cap sheet, black to get into there. Just because those are kind of crucial areas, at least in my region here, where you get some pretty good winters. You don't want any ice dam backing up. Definitely, if it's a larger section or a lower slope than a four, you'd want to consider that. Or even put a uh, EPDM membrane in there. Uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. It's getting long. I'm going to get some pictures next. Unfortunately, I can't do pictures while still filming, so I appreciate it if you have watched this far. If you could give it a quick thumbs up, I do this for you guys to help try to teach what I can if you're wanting to watch and learn. Comment down below. Let me know what you like to see, what you don't like to see, what you want to see in the future, and try to get this channel up there a little bit bigger, more noticeable, more recognized, so I can keep doing more of this for you guys. Unfortunately, the roofing company and being productive and getting estimates and jobs quoted and scheduled and done is the priority over the content for the channel. Somebody commented about that recently. A lot of people don't realize how much time it takes, but somebody did comment that they understood that. And yes, I, I want to do more of this, but it is a chore and a job itself. When you got to keep the company afloat, that's the priority, not the content. So again, if you could, simple things you could do, it's super free. Quick thumbs up, comment, engage, subscribe, share with other people you know, getting ready to get their roofs done. And as always, until next time, be safe, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.